Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Good evening, dear devotees from Bhubaneswar Dham. So this is our second session. Would you please mute yourself? Sorry, we're having a little technical problem. So I'm looking for Tapasvi Maharaj, who should be speaking soon. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start, though. We had a really wonderful first session this morning. We're still having some technical problems. Just a second. Hi, Krishna. Yeah, time is good. Now it's okay? All right. All right, Krishna. So looks like we're... This morning we had a really wonderful session. We heard something from Bhagavat Maharaj, who had a lot of early association with Gorgamina Maharaj here in Bhubaneswar. We also heard different things from Chaitanya Chandra Prabhu, Guru Maharaj's disciple, Devamrita Maharaj, Bhattasarathi Maharaj, a lot of those folks from these things, Anuradha, Mataji and Vajayanti Mali, Maladasi spoke very, very wonderful description of Guru Maharaj's description. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Anupam, I think that was you. You muted now. So today we're asking Tapasvi Maharaj to speak. I don't see him online here yet. We'll see how that goes. But I want to start off with a uh, short video, just for a couple minutes, of uh, our Guru Maharaj speaking something about Vaishnava Pura. So we'll go ahead and start that right now. Speaking is lost. lost. So Tapasvi Maharaj has not showed up yet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. And, uh, Anupam Prabhu, would you like to say something now? I 
I can't hear you. You're 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 still muted. Uh, now, if you'd like to go ahead and start now, I, I, I'm in a little difficult situations. Tapasvi Maharaj didn't show up. I wrote to him again, but I, well, here he is. He's, he's online now. Yeah. I'm flexible. Uh, Tapasvi Maharaj is here. Let's, let's go ahead with him. He's just connecting right now to the audio and he says he can't hear me yet. So, uh, I want to give a little introduction for Tapasvi Maharaj, but I'd, I'd like to wait until he comes online. In any case, I, I want to thank all the wonderful devotees who are taking part in it. And Krishna Chaitra Maharaj is here right now. He'll be speaking later on. And also Anupam and Madan Malasa and Madhu. And we have a short video tonight from Vaishesh Prabhu. And if all goes well, Lokanath Maharaj is supposed to be showing up. We'll have a short video also from Sachinanda Maharaj. So I'm just waiting now for Tapasvi Maharaj. Maharaj, it shows that you're you're there. Can yeah, you hear I'm me? Here now. Tapasvi Maharaj. Um, hold on a minute. I'm just making sure you can hear me. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you okay. I see you good. Thank you very much. So let me just, just say a word or two to introduce you because maybe not everybody is, is familiar with Tapasvi Maharaj. If you're not, you're an unfortunate person. Thank you. Tapasvi uh, Purva Ashram name was Ananta, and uh, he spent a lot of time living in Shra with Guru Maharaj. He was Guru Maharaj's driver, and he has a lot of uh, exciting stories to tell <laughs> about driving Guru Maharaj around in, in Arissa and Padayatra. And uh, he also traveled with Guru Maharaj, he just showed him for some time. And I saw how Guru Maharaj treated him with great affection. Like a friend. Since then, he's not taking sannyas and now he's traveling around the teaching and I'm just really really happy <laughs> that you're here right Maharaj. I was really I'm really but aside from that we're delighted to have you we had a really good discussion with uh, Bhagavat Maharaj I'm looking to see who needs to be muted um sorry to interrupt can you actually see me because I can't see myself right but can you see Okay, let me see what I can do here. If uh, please, everybody else, mute yourself. <laughs> that sounds like a really terrible thing to say. Okay. Okay. Raghavan is just saying he can see. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah I, I can see you, Marsh. Okay, great. I can see. So go ahead, please start. I should start. Yeah, please. Oh, okay. Maharaj, um, I don't think anybody can hear you properly. I don't know if it's your mic or your internet connection or something, but try it. if you can get closer to your mic, try that. Okay. And Raghav is suggesting that, that devotees could turn off their video. Is that better? Yeah, that's much better. Great. Thank you. Hooray, great. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, I offer my Dandavat pranams to my beloved masters, Niti Lila Pravishta Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj, to Niti Lila Pravishta Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, to Niti Lila Pravishta Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj, and to Niti Lila Pravishta Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, and to all our Guru Varga. To all the Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, Dandavat Pranams. So I'm very excited to be here with all of you because um, we're glorifying uh, 
our uh, one who is most dear to our heart in, in so many ways. And just like a, a mother who brings up a, a small child, that child obviously has so much affection for their mother because the mother kind of nursed them through their life in so many ways. Maybe when they're older, it doesn't seem so necessary, the mother's role, but at the very beginning, um, especially, um, the mother is nurturing that child, looking after that child and protecting that child in so many different ways. So certainly that's the way uh, I feel about uh, Srila Guru Govinda Maharaj. Uh, he told me <laughs> when I came to Bhuvaneshwar, uh, he said, don't worry, I will make you fireproof. Uh, meaning that all the challenges a, a young teenage man and uh, you know, a 20, 21 year old boy would face that he would make, make me uh, fireproof and to be able to go through all the challenges in life. So he was always uh, encouraging us to be strong and to get, help us so much. Many of us, interestingly enough, I was thinking about this today, many of us like Srila Prabhupada, when he came in the uh, mid sixties to the Western world, that who was his audience? It was mostly the, the, the hippies. So Srila Gorgavinda Maharaj's audience was mostly people who were sort of um, connected but disconnected at the same time. I, I certainly, I'm saying this because I fell into that category of feeling that, okay, I'm in this, uh, in, in ISKCON and in the society, but still feeling a bit confused, not really clear. And I remember the, the first few weeks uh, when, when we arrived there, Srila Borgavinda Maharaj spent countless hours with so many devotees um, just answering questions on a lot was on Guru Tattva. Uh, because at that time, there were many challenges in the society and the devotees were feeling a little bit um, not just disturbed, but confused and worried and, and uncertain of, of how to go forward amongst this uh, ter turmoil that was there at this time. I'm talking about, you know, sort of the late 80s and early 90s. And so many devotees were coming to Srila Gorgavin Maharaj to, to get clarity. Uh, to, to understand the Siddhanta so they could go forward in their spiritual life. And Maharaj spent hours and hours, and we used to, as some of you may remember, we, Maharaj would go on a parikram around the temple, and there would be a, a small group of devotees, and, and everybody was firing questions at Maharaj all the time, essentially on Guru Tattva, to try to understand. Uh, why, why we felt confused, uh, try, to try to help us to become really clear. And this he did. And to me, that was um, when I talked about the child growing up with a mother, its guidance, this was so essential for me. It helped me give so much direction and understanding of the process. And uh, the, the, the questions and the doubts we're, we're, very, we're, we're, we're leaving, we're leaving. I could feel this clarity coming within me. And so that was like my first experience of, of, of just clarity, which was to me a little unusual at that time. And he inspired us and he said something in a class one day that um, has resonated uh, in my life. Uh, all the time, and he, and, and he was explaining that how Sri Guru gives faith. By hearing from Sri Guru, then um, faith is manifested within the heart of the disciple. And I started to experience that process. And in his association, the things he was speaking about, uh, many of us we were experiencing them at the same time. I'm talking about the very 
basic levels here about um, sambandha, about relationship with, with guru and the principle of guru. And this was really a groundbreaking um, moment for so many devotees. I saw devotee after devotee coming to Bhuvaneshwar and, you know, almost like the, the light bulb was, that, that was being turned on. And it's like, oh, I understand Guru Tattva now. And that was so helpful, so helpful and so essential. Because at that time, many devotees were feeling, um, uh, as I said, uncertain. And this gave them an anchor. Maharaj gave them this anchor by his clear explanation of Tattva. So then, as time passed, um, uh, uh, Mar uh, the devotees bought Maharaj a brand new car, as Madhavananda Prabhu was saying. I drove, uh, I was going to say, drove, drove Srila Gauru Govinda Maharaj mad sometimes, but, <laughs> but uh, uh, drove him in the car on Padiatra. And, and yes, that was um, definitely a highlight because uh, the devotees would be going on Padiatra. Uh, in the certain areas, and we would be staying in a, like a circuit bungalow, they called them, you know, for, for the government. One of his disciples, Sachinandan Du, um, got these circuit bungalows, and we stayed in there. So there was me, um, well, there was Shilagor Gavin Maharaj, the cook, the assistant, and me, <laughs> the driver. And I saw Maharaj there, um, mostly he was chanting Harinam. He would be sitting on his bed, chanting Harinam, and in a very relaxed mood. And he was so happy on Padiatra. And I wanted to tell uh, one Leela, because we don't have much time, so uh, uh, that was, was quite, it sort of reminded me of Nityananda Prabhu, his, his sort of wildness and his, his way of, uh, his exuberance, let's say. Uh, and, and that was, was that we were, going to different programs at night from that little bungalow. And uh, we would move every three or four days to a different house. And we'd just come to this first house and we were staying in this first house and the devotees came to Srila Gorgav and Maharaj and said, Maharaj, problem is there to get to the program tonight. And we said, oh, well, what, what's the program problem? And the devotee said, well, the, the bridge is broken across the river. <laughs> There's a river and there, there used to be a bridge and that's gone now. So then they said, um, Maharaj asked them, well, how deep is it? And then he held his hand. Is it ankle deep? He, he would put his hand on his ankle or is it knee deep? And then is all up the waist. And as he was saying this, he was looking at me uh, chuckling and laughing. And, and, and he was like, uh, kind of already knowing where we were going and what was going to happen, but he was like building up this whole scenario. <laughs> so then, um, then he looks at me, says, so what should we do? And, you know, I was, I was like 21. I said, Maharaj, we should go. We should go. You know, there was like, wasn't any hesitation. <laughs> it was like, yes, let's, let's, let's just go. And he said, okay. So then we got in the car and um, this is the daytime. And then eventually we drove for about half an hour. We came to the bank of the river and I was sitting there in the car. Um, Maharaj was sitting in the back and I think, yes. And his assistant was sitting with him. So I, I was sitting, standing there and I was thinking, my God, I didn't think this river was actually that big. I, you know, in my mind, I thought, oh, we can cross it. Uh, and then I thought I had a, like a moments of hesitation. And then I looked to the right side and this Indian bus that was um, going full speed and it basically leapt across the bank of the river and landed right in the river. And he drove straight across the river and up the other bank and across and he went on. And there wasn't like any kind of <laughs> anything, a hesitation from the driver. And it seemed like, oh, this is the normal thing to do. So I thought, right, okay. So <laughs> I didn't jump over the bank. I went down the slope and I just drove across the river. And just before I started this, I said, Gurudev, are you ready? 
And he went, join the Shringa Dave! And shouted it so loudly. I thought, right, that's the green light. I just pressed on the, on the accelerator. We went straight into the river, right across. And Maharaj is rolling in the back. He's laughing. He's rolling and laughing. And ha, 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 ha. And his arms are up in the air. And he's just, oh, it was just incredible. There was this kind of euphoria that was going on in the car. But Maharaj was laughing so much and I was laughing because, you know, I didn't know how this was going to happen or what was going to happen. And the, the Sevak, who, who was uh, Indian um, Brahmachari, was sitting very quietly <laughs> next to Maharaj, a little worried about what was going to happen. So anyway, we kind of jumped over the bank and got up to the program. And Maharaj was just beaming, so happy that we, we got across. He, he, he spoke that night and then... He looked at me and said, right, now we've got to go back. And I thought, okay, uh, I knew this was going to happen. So uh, this is at nighttime. So we put some devotees on the high banks uh, on the river with a lantern. And uh, so we aimed for the devotees, uh, for each different devotee, <laughs> to get across the, the river at night and got up the other side. And Maharaj was, he, he, he was like repeating this story to me uh, often, remembering that our adventures to, to, um, to serve the mission of Mahaprabhu. And that was his, his great joy. He, I, I saw his greatest joy was preaching, was to give this message of Mahaprabhu to everyone. And every night we went on the programs, when he would come back, all his clothes were mostly just soaked, completely wet. And, and he would get in the car and he would feel this kind of um, intense energy from Maharaj. And he would sit down and he was completely wet. And he would say, preaching is life. Preaching is life. And, and then, you know, we would go to, to, uh, back, to back to the program. Back, sorry, back to the um, house or room. So um, another one, uh, some of you may have heard, but uh, some of my favorite times in Maharaj was when we were going to Singapore and we were, uh, which we didn't know, we were actually, ISKCON at that time, were banned from going into Singapore. So we got to the immigration, uh, um, you know, where they stamp your passport to allow you in. And uh, the man said to me, are you ISKCON? And I thought I should say no, because there's something not right here. Something's not right. But then I looked at uh, uh, Gurudev, Srila Guru Govinda Maharaj, and I thought, if I say we're not from ISKCON, may maybe it won't be a good thing at all. So I said, oh, yes, we're from ISKCON. A and uh, then he said, right, you're not permitted entry, refused entry. Uh, you'll have to go to jail. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is not good. And uh, Gurudev was in, a, Guru Maharaj was in a wheelchair at that time from the plane. And they basically said, okay, we've got to put you in jail. We negotiated with them and they put us in, in jail in a hotel room in the airport. And basically what happened, I was unpacking Gurudev, Guru Maharaj's things. And then I saw a picture of Gopal and I said, uh, Guru Maharaj, shall I take this picture of Gopal out? He says, yes, you should take that picture out of Gopal because he has put us in jail. So he should be in jail also with us. <laughs> so that was his, his, his mood was always that Gopal, his beloved deity Gopal, is putting him in all these circumstances and situations. So he should be here with us as well. So... It was uh, essentially a, a dream to, to, to be with um, Maharaj because of his um, great spiritual power. And uh, what I have noticed being with him, uh, it gives one the ability to, uh, uh, when you associate with such a Vaishnava, uh, you come to understand what it means to some degree in, in our small way to be with a Vaishnav. When you are with such a Vaishnav, that feeling um, goes into your heart 
And whatever they do and wherever they go, their interactions and their speaking to you, their harikata, uh, it's an experience in itself. And that experience in one sense has been my barometer, let's say, in my life, my guidance in my life. Always saying, if that experience that I had with Srila Govinda Maharaj and continue to experience, is am I, uh, um, am I um, experiencing that? In, in this situation with these other Vaishnavas. And it's not a judgment, but it's, it's a recognition of that, oh, I'm associating with such a Vaishnav because that same feeling is there, that same recognition. And so there are innumerable amounts of teaching that Maharaj has given me um, that in his Harikata or in general ways that have always been uh, principles that have guided me to make, um, hopefully, the, the best decision. And even when I haven't been able to make the best decision, like a GPS, it's brought me back to understand, okay, this is the place you want to be in. These are the decisions to make. So they, they have really, uh, Maharaj has really sort of embedded, implanted within me some sort of um, uh, 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 hardware, software that, that um, um, gives a kind of um, direction and, and that has been invaluable for me and, and certainly um, there's many other things that we could speak on but I don't want to take all your time but I would say uh, in essence what he spoke about was Guru Tattva which was so important Shabda Brahman this point of hearing um, not just hearing from the lectures or books but hearing from the Vaishnav, so his mood, his bhav, will enter into your heart. Otherwise, it won't. You let, the other, other activities are helpful, certainly. They will give you enthusiasm and encouragement. Why? To hear from the Vaishnav. Yes, I must find that Vaishnav and hear from him. So um, these are some of the topics that Maharaj uh, really uh, forcefully uh, established and his, um, on my last point, is that when we went to Nigeria and he was coming off the plane, uh, I saw the tiredness, the, the great effort, the compassion in his, uh, in his whole being, that he was physically very difficult for him to move and, and to go different uh, places. But... Um, he said, I cannot leave my children alone. I cannot just leave them. And this was his uh, deep meditation in, in many circumstances where he was challenged. He felt that, no, I must go and see my children uh, and I must assist them. So when we were getting off the plane, uh, the, uh, uh, at that point, I, I, I got some glimpse of the, of the, the dedication and the compassion that he had for all those who are connected to Mahaprabhu. Um, so I'll, I'll stop here and I so much appreciate the opportunity to remember Srila Govind Maharaj. And in a few days, I'll be going to Bhuvaneshwar, <laughs> to Gadai Giri, to um, take darshan of Gopal Ju, his his um, dear, dear Takorji, Dandavat Pranams Prabhu, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. It is really wonderful. If you come to Jagannath Puri around that time, please come and visit us in our ashram there. We have a, a definitely near Taranala. I, I was appreciating <laughs> you speaking about the GPS. Some people say that's our Guru Parampara system. <laughs> that's funny, Guru Parampara system. Yes, 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 yes. GPS. So we've been hearing that from that about you, from about that from you. And I was also what you were speaking reminded me of, of a verse that Sanatan Goswami wrote in Krishna Rila Stava, where he says that Rupa Namashita Vishta, that when someone meditates on the Rup and the Nam, Krishna, then Ashrita, they're taking shelter that then Avishta, that Rupa Nam enter into that devotee. And I think this is a point you are making so nicely that when we associate with Vaishnavas of that kind of caliber, 
then that kata, that, that, that shakti comes into our heart. Bhakti Vinod speaks about yes. that also. Right. Yes, that? Guru Maharaj used to call it, what is it? Uh, Gaura Shakti. Yeah. That Gaura Shakti is moving through you, is vibrating through you. And that's, that's the experience. It was like always being, as Srila Bhakti Rathak Maharaj is like a golden volcano, although he's talking about Mahaprabhu. That was my experience of Srila Gaura Maharaj, like this golden volcano, 24 hours just constantly, not in the sort of passionate way that we sometimes think of the, you know, of the energy, but it was a volcanic within energy, as, as you all know, that was full of praying. Yes, thank you very much. I remember sometimes Guru Maharaj would use the word Udgar. He said that that, yeah. that Mukodgirna, Sri Chaitanya Mukodgirna, that, that Mahaprabhu speaking was like a volcano coming out of his mouth. And sometimes you use the word udgar, which means to vomit. And he mm. said, well, when do you vomit? <laughs> when your stomach is full. Yeah, and then when you beautiful. vomit, by the smell of the vomit, mm -hmm. you can tell what the person's been eating. Yes, so when yes. someone speaks, we can see what they've been eating, mm. who they've been eating. Vomit. Yes. A very yes, nice yes. yes, beautiful. And, and his, his deep uh, 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 um, ruchi for Harikata, his ruchi for the Bhagavatam, all these things that I didn't understand so much and I'm beginning to touch on now as I try to study and understand that his, his real ruchi for these, this, this Ras Kata, this teaching, I mean, he really brought, you know, like at the express train into listen, this is the goal, now practice it, now live it. And then he gave you at moments experience of that in his Harikata, you know, and that was... Um, I think, you know, for, for young boys, uh, that, that was just so, I mean, at that time, who was so, speaking about myself, so disconnected and, and distracted that it was just so absorbing. It was incredible that, that, that it was just so absorbing. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us today. I really, really appreciate it. We, we, you're a mirror for Gormarsh. We, we see some aspect of him through your words and through your heart. I, I really, really appreciate that because we want to meet with him. And I, I find so many different Vaishnavas have so many different perspectives of him. And sometimes to be really blunt in our Vaishnav Sangha or Sanghas, uh, we don't always appreciate someone else's perspective. That's not necessarily bad. We should seek out Vaishnavas who are like-minded but we should understand that, that these personalities are not one dimensional mm. and that necessarily different Vaishnavas are going to see them in different ways. And the more that we're broad minded to appreciate that, the more that we'll receive and see that. So I, I thank mm. you so much. I, I really, really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you yeah. come and visit us in Pori. Yes, I, I will do my best. You can, if you can send me your t telephone number or something <laughs> yeah, and then I can. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you an email. I think a Sikh Krishna Maharaj, our god brother, will also be with us for a day or two. Just oh, okay. like a day or wonderful, like wonderful, wonderful. Yes, that's be wonderful. And like you're making the point that even as human beings, I myself, you are multi dimensional. We can't just put people in a box and this is how they are. Each person may have certain aspects that are difficult to understand, but there's another aspect in them as well. Each person is multi dimensional. So when we talk about Sri Guru, that Krishna is also multidimensional and all these aspects, as we begin to soften our own hearts and become more accepting, then we're able, they re re reveal these other aspects of themselves. So that's a beautiful point you were making. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Maharaj. Thank you. So I want to ask Madhukar Prabhu, I sent you a private message here, but you didn't reply. Uh, I see you're present, but uh, are, uh, are you actually there? <laughs> who's really present? Who's really not? It's a question where I'm wondering. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> okay. so, um, just, uh, oh, thank you, Madhu Karpabu. So why don't you go ahead and, and start? I, I, let me just give a brief introduction for devotees who don't know Madhu Karpabu. And I have to confess that I haven't had any direct association with Madhu Prabhu. I just know a little bit about him from Facebook and what I've heard about him from different Vaishnavas. 
you'll see he's doing Hari Kata almost every day online. He's a very simple devotee. He's got a new center they've opened in America. And they have a very broad-minded program. There's many different Vaishnavas from different Sanghas who are taking part there. And uh, Madhukar Prabhu himself has the good fortune of having received Diksha from Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj. And uh, also he's got an association with many different higher Vaishnavas. He lived for many years in Vrindavan, where he's getting trained up. And I asked him to speak to Maddie. He said, well, I, I never met Gorgavinder Maharaj. I said, that's okay. We'd like to hear something from you, your impression of him or something about Guru Tattva or just some advice for us or something. So thank you very much, Madhu Prabhu, for taking time. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Milikangena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Vanchakalpatru Vyasya Kripa Sundu Bhyayagacha Patitanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha So I'm, I'm feeling very shy to be speaking in front of so many exalted disciples of Srila Gaur Govinda Goswami Raj but I'm also feeling fortunate um, the Srila, Srila Bhakti Vidyan Bharati Goswami Raj, um, he, he would say that our greatest fortune, our greatest sampad is when we have the opportunity to perform kirtan, when, we, when we're able to glorify these exalted Mahabhagavats. And it's the greatest vipad, the greatest, the greatest sampad is to glorify the Vaishnavas, but the greatest vipad, the greatest calamity for us is when a day goes by and we miss that chance. So I'm just grateful to have this opportunity. I, I typed something up and I just read it before to see how long it would take to speak it all. And it was 16 minutes. So I'm not going to even, I'll just see what happens. But um, um, yeah, you can tell me also if I, if I start going over time, I'll, I'll set my timer right here. But, um, but yeah, Srila Gaur Govinda Goswami Maharaj's kata, it was, oh, and first of all, I offer my respectful obeisances unto my, my worshipful Srila Gurudev, Mithil Vishto, Mishnupar, Ashatara Shatashimaj, Srila Bhakti Varanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, and unto my Param Gurudev, unto Nithil Vishto, Mishnupar, Srila Bhakti Varanta Swami Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, and to Nithil Vishto, Mishnupar, Srila Gaur Govinda Goswami Maharaj. So, um, and all the Vaishnavas present, please accept my dandavat pranam. So, Srila Gaur Govinda Goswami Maharaj's kata was, yeah, it was the most enlivening thing. I want to say that it's exciting, but I don't think that word is appropriate because there's some like sense gratification in that word, I think. But in the end, Srila Gaur Govinda Goswami Maharaj's kata, it didn't make you want to enjoy, it made you want to surrender and give up everything. It was, and like dedicate yourself. So, when I was, um, like 12 years old or 13 or 14, I don't know, or, you know, when I was probably going through puberty, I don't know. <laughs> I read um, this book, um, The Worship of Sri Guru. And, and I'm pretty sure that's the first devotional book I ever read on my own. And then after that, I read um, The Process of Inquiry. And through, through his books, through his kata, I got a taste to read more and more. And I think as any parent could tell you um, that to get, a, to get a kid to want to read more and more devotional literature, to get them excited about reading isn't an easy thing. <laughs> but that was the potency of his kata, that it was even able to attract uh, you know, a child to want to read more and more. And, and even his kata, sometimes it'd be so far beyond anything I could ever, probably ever even understand in this lifetime topics like the separation moods of Mahaprabhu, of Radharani, but still, even though it's so far away, you want to hear more and more. And, and he was always pushing everyone to go deeper, endeavor more, come closer to the words of Srila Prabhupada, of, of our Acharyas, not just passively read the books, but to really dive deep. And, and, um, and that's not something that we can do on our own, but, that's, but he was there to grab our whole hand and, and bring us along with him, just show us a tiny drop of what he relishes in Srila Prabhupada's books. And he, he, I, he would say in his kata, I've, I've read it in places, I just saw it in a random class that I opened today. He, 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 like, here's one thing from, um, from this Radha uh, makes Krishna mad. He says that the use of these words is very, very appropriate, these words in Chaitanya Chaitanya. I don't know if you can relish it unless you know this language. 
my Guru Maharaj said, in order to understand this and relish this Amrita, Chaitanya Charita Amrita, all should learn Bengali. Tabe e premanander anubhava hoi, kabu jadi e premar hoi be ashray. Krishna thinks, if I become the ashray of this Radha Prem, then I can relish it. Otherwise, there is no possibility. Eta chinti rohe Krishna paramakotuki. With such a very deep intensity, Krishna was thinking. Hridaye badaye prema lobo dak daki. This word, dak daki. The word lobe here is greed for Radha Prem. Very intense greed, which cannot be suppressed. In the heart, there is a throbbing. Duck, 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 duck. While preparing sweet rice, you'll notice that when it becomes very thick, it makes a sound. Duck, 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 duck. Prem lob duck, ducky. Very intense greed. Duck, 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 duck. Such a word is used here. And you cannot relish it if you do not learn Bengali. Shri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami has written it like that. Then Krishna becomes gore to, be, to relish that Ashraya Jatya Sukh Ananda. So to, to really, Shri Gorgovana Goswami Maharaj, he would always say to, to understand that the, these words that he's saying, and he'd be always giving these special expressions of our Acharyas so that we can go deeper into understanding Srila Prabhupada's words and we can gain more appreciation. But also just understanding these words um, you know, and, and understanding all these expressions. And even if you memorize all of Srila Prabhupada's teachings and instructions, you can, you can have them all memorized, but even then you might not even be able to understand a single sentence because we have all these layers of ahankar, abhiman, all this pride, selfishness, independence. And all of this is blocking us from being able to truly dive deep into Srila Prabhupada's words. So then to, to really make people understand what Srila Prabhupada has brought, what has given us, he's, he, he would demolish all these things, all this ahankar, abhiman, pride. And you can see it in, in um, I've, I've seen it in videos, I've heard from devotees who've been chastised them, <laughs> chastised by him, how his, his merciful chastisements, how, it, and it was really intense, like he, calling people fools, lusty, pretender. And normally when you get chastised so heavily, that would make somebody become defensive or hurt or demolish all their self-confidence. But with Srila Gorgo, Vinagos Swami Maharaj, his chastisements would give all hope. It'd be invigorating. The people would feel that he sees me. He sees all my crap. I can't hide anymore. There's no fooling him. You're just forced to stand there completely open and naked. But then a lightness of heart comes. It's a complete, like you feel completely liberated that it's all right. I don't need to pretend anymore because I'm, and, and because I'm so horrible, it doesn't make him want to reject me. On the contrary, it makes him want to give, it wants him to make, uh, he wants to help me even more because, because that's his nature is to help those who need it most. And so his chastisement um, was the ultimate expression of love. And, and it, was, it was his acceptance. It pulled people closer to him. And, and that chastisement radically changed people's lives. It would destroy all any kind of duplicity, all kinds of anartas, and make people completely simple and innocent and like dependent children. Um, I, I watched uh, um, this, uh, this Royal Staircase uh, series and um, Tapasvi Maharaj was an, uh, at that, that time Anantara Prabhu and um, his video too. Um, and he was, he was walking down um, this, uh, when, when they arrived right in, in front of his hut, um, then Ananta Prabhu asked him, is, is that kicking of Nityan, Nityananda the guru? And Srila Gorgobana Goswami Maharaj said, yes, guru's mercy is kicking, yes. And then Ananta asked a couple of times, said, how does guru kick us? And then Srila Gorgobana Goswami Maharaj said, he'll, he'll, he'll slap you. Guru Karana Dharam. Guru has that right. Nobody has such right. If someone slaps you, then you go, hey, what do you say? Then you'll react. But to Guru, out of your own will, you have said, Shishashtaham Sharimam Tom Prapanam. I've become your Shisha, your disciple. That means I'm under your strict discipline. Inflict discipline on me. Slap me now. And then, and then Guru slaps. Yes. I've completely given myself to Guru. I don't belong to myself anymore. Then Guru can utilize you as he likes. Why shall you react? You are not yours, you are Guru's. That's Guru's mercy. 
And that's the kicking of Nityananda. And um, so there's, there's one, um, a point that Srila Gorgobinda Goswami Maharaj would make that I always, um, it's been so helpful for me. Um, and I always come back to it, I always quote it um, about how Guru and Vaishnavs, and sometimes he uses it in relation to Gora and Ananda Prabhu, that they are, they are patit pavan, they are the, the saviors of the fallen. Um, the, the, um, but they are not kapati pavan. They are not the. They don't deliver those who are um, who are full of duplicity or crooked. And here's a little quote um, from the article "Simplicity and Faith." He gave in 1991. Um, he says, "Everything takes place according to the will of Krishna. If he doesn't will, a blade of grass will not shake. So it is a question of faith. But why do we lack faith?" Dhruva immediately put strong faith. He was not afraid of any situation. Where is that Narayan? Where is Narayan? This example is also there in the story of the young boy and Gopal. But we can't put faith. What is the reason? Why are these small children able to have faith, but adults cannot? It is because you are crooked and they are simple. A child is very simple, but as soon as he grows up and associates with adults, those who are very crooked, he develops crookedness. Otherwise, in the beginning, a child is very simple. Simplicity is Vaishnavism. All of our acharyas have said this. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami stresses on this. Saralata hi Vaishnavata. Simplicity is Vaishnavism. Real Vaishnavas are as simple as a child. There is no question of crookedness, duplicity, or pretentiousness in them. But our heart is full of these things. We are not at all simple-hearted persons. We are very crooked. Duplicity, crookedness, and pretentiousness are in you. But Krishna is in your heart. He knows what is in you, and you cannot cheat him. Therefore, we say that sadhu, guru, mahajan are patit pavan, not kapati pavan. They are saviors of the fallen, not saviors of the crooked. And, oh God, I don't know. If, oh my God, I'm at 10 minutes already. Okay, so anyhow, um, I have more to say, but I'm just going to, I'm just... Really, where, where can we find such a loving guru? Such also, I, um, anyways, yeah, my, I feel my, my Srila Gurudev and Srila Gorgobana Goswami Maharaj, they're very similar. Um, and that's why whenever I'm around any of Srila Gorgobana Goswami Maharaj's disciples, I feel like an automatic, uh, I feel almost like they're like my god brothers, you know, or my god sisters. I feel an automatic kind of that family, family kind of uh, feeling towards them. And, um, and I'm just praying that, that um, on this day that's become glorious with glorifications of this Mahabhagavat, I pray that Srila Gaur Govinda Goswami Maharaj, that he removes all crookedness from my heart so that I can just become a simple child and be able to accept his loving and strong mercy. And by this, with his guidance and encouragement, I'll be able to truly serve and please my Srila Prabhupada and my Srila Gurudev. Um, okay, I went to Rancha Kalpatru Vistra Kipa Sindhu Bhyavacha Patita Anam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namonama. You know, a Vaishnav can say many things, but as St. Francis of Assisi once told some of his followers, he said, you should preach. And then he paused and he said, and if necessary, you should say something. In other words, <laughs> Little way to teach is by our behavior. And so Madhukar Prabhu is speaking about simplicity, but in your demeaning and your words and everything about I can see you have that simplicity. Thank you very much. I just like to add one little anecdote that you were mentioning about how Gurmaj would speak so strongly. And we would see sometimes he, he would pick out a devotee in the audience and start hammering him. Sometimes that devotee would the next day he would sit in the back <laughs> or he would hide. Or even once I remember, I was traveling with Guru Maharaj and there was one very senior Vaishnava who had disciples and he just didn't show up the next day. Because he couldn't uh, tolerate that blast from him. I also remember once someone told me that they, they were playing a recording of Guru Maharaj speaking and there was one Mataji in the house there and she got so disturbed by Guru Maharaj's intensity that she jumped up and ran and locked the door to her room. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it was very, very uncomfortable. <laughs>
Okay. Anyway, I thank you very much, Mother Clara. But I really, really appreciate it. It's so nice that that we, we you give your chance to, to you, we get a chance to hear something from you and learn a little something more about this person that we we're trying to learn something about, trying to know. So now uh, we'd like to request. Uh, let's see what's coming next. Anupama Madhulasa, Lokanath Maharaj, are you okay? You're you're here. Can you wait till your slotted time? Is that all right? Thank you very much for coming. To uh, yeah, I'll wait. I, I'm not hearing you. Um, not loud enough. For... Okay. Um, I, I've got you scheduled here for about 7.30 this evening. Is that still okay for you? We're, yeah, we're yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm here to listen to other okay. speakers. Thank you so much for taking part in this. So I'd like to request Anupam Prabhu to say something and his good wife, Madam Lalasa. And uh, Anupam Prabhu... Uh, a lawyer, he came to Gurmarj very late, but I saw that, that Gurmarj gave him a lot of affection, a lot of attention, and very quickly he imbibed a lot from Gurmarj. As Srila Prabhupada once told some of the devotees who made a comment about Gurmarj, he said, How can he take sannyas? He's just a new man. And Prabhupada told him, Who's a new man? <laughs> You're a new man. He's been a Vaishnav from his birth. So Anupam Prabhu, although he was a new person in some ways, and later I saw that very, very quickly he got a lot of affection and mercy from Gurmarj. And I just like to welcome you, Anupam Prabhu, tonight. And, and if you could share a few things with us, we'd be very, very grateful. Haribo Prabhu. Dandavat Pranam to all. All glories to Srila Gurudev and all glories to Srila Prabhupada. So uh, recently you posted something, the last entry of Sri Gurudev in his diary. And I was intrigued about that. There's only three sentences, but I want to uh, mention them here. And uh, that is, Prabhu Gopal, please give me mercy. Make Krishna Prema and Bhakti. Please make a proper group of devotees. Uh-oh. Can you get closer to the mic or something? I don't know. Also, it sounds like somebody else is muted in the background. Is somebody jumping? Okay, I think they're muted now. But I can't hear you now, Anupam. Yes, no. I hope I'm back. Yeah, let's finish. No? So the, the last entry in Srila Gurudev's diary was, Prabhu Gopal, please give mercy. Make Krishna Prema and Bhakti available to the, serf, to the servant. Please make available a proper group of devotees, friends, comrades, and associates. Allow the servant to be su successful in the service of Sri Sri Guru and Guranga. Actually, uh, Anuradha Mataji, in the morning schedule program, she also mentioned this verse, and I thought she would elaborate on that. Luckily, she didn't, so I can go on with my presentation. Otherwise, it would have been a problem. So there are only three sentences, but very concise and so strong. I think we could uh, have a lecture on each and every sentence. I just want to focus on the second sentence. In the second sentence, Nagurudev requests to make available a proper group of devotees, friends, comrades, and associates available. So this is not just a group. It should be a proper group. What means proper? To me, it seems to be a group suited and aligned for a special purpose, a group of like-minded persons, a group with a mission. And then within the group, Sri Lankuridhya, this differentiates between devotees, friends, comrades, and associates. So I ask myself, where are the disciples? Shouldn't disciples be part of this group? And how does Sri Lankuridhya address his godbrothers? Does he include in this group other Vaishnavas? inside or outside is gone. Maybe it's my speculation, but I give my head, I give you my two pennies and I'm anxious to hear any other realizations. So why are devotees mentioned first? Is a friend more intimate than a comrade or the reverse? Why are associates included? First of all, first of all, to me it seems that a disciple can never be a friend, comrade, or associate of the guru. Guru is internally master, 
disciple is eternally servant. In that relationship, we may have personal sentiments like feeling some kind of friendship with Sila Gurudev, but I wonder if any disciple of Sila Gurudev can claim to be on a level of friendship with Sila Gurudev. If we want to label our friendship relationship with Gurudev, it would be nothing else than him being our eternal well-wisher rather than a friend, etc. So based on this, by the process of elimination, disciples qualify as devotees in this group. How a disciple actually qualifies to be included in this proper group, I don't know. So a friend and a comrade almost mean the same. A, a friend can be somebody you have a good relationship with, but a comrade means by definition that one is intimately connected. So there is a difference. An, as, an associate, on the other hand, need not be a friend or comrade. Normally, an associate is a partner you, who you work with, with together on a common purpose. Sometimes an associate is considered to be a co-worker or employee. Like it says in the Simit Bhagatam and Chaitanya Tamarit, that Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu come with the associates. So, Sula so Gurudev God Brothers, he may be a friend, comrade, or an associate. It is not my position to rank anyone. Same applies to other Vaishnavas. But I wonder who would be a part of a proper group in 1996 as per his own wish. Who were his devotees, friends, comrades, and associates? I guess Sri felt unsupported in 1996, and back to his Gopal, to make available a proper group of devotees, friends, comrades, and associates. Most important for me to find out if his disciples are included in this proper group. It seems to me that disciples should, should be considered devotees. However, who can call himself to be a proper devotee? Or disciples could be considered an associate. Then who can call himself an associate? Better to be the dog of the guru. So if Srila Gurudev may treat me as a dog, I would be most fortunate. Low fallen as I am, my only qualification is the loyalty of a dog to his master, nothing else. Jai Srila Gurudev, Jai Srila Prabhupada. So that was my contribution. And Madan has, uh, has, has also a contribution. And I'll go continue with reading that. This is a little longer, but very from her heart. That's why she asked me to, 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 to present it and uh, she felt a bit shy to present it. My beloved Srila Gurudev, 25 long, long years since your disappearance. 25 long, long years of separations from you. I am sometimes thinking, wondering how and why this all has happened. I think most of us were not prepared for this sudden separation from you. I consider myself most fortunate to have found you after years of searching, carefully listening to other sannyasi gurus. But after a couple of years of fruitless search, I found myself not feeling inspired. I felt hopeless, desperate, and the only thing I could do was to pray and cry to Sila Prabhupada. Then you mercifully appeared in my life. There was some politics going on here in Holland. So I was very much relieved and grateful that you had accepted me as your disciple in 1995. And I still remember clearly that sitting in your classes, I felt very fortunate and thought to myself, yes, I have made it. The hardest test in my life I have passed now. I have found the most precious person here there is in the whole world, the whole wide world, my own bona fide spiritual master. I had heard that according to some astrologers, you would live up to 90 years. And I was most, most delighted to hear this good news. I pictured myself sitting tightly in your classes, just like in the scenes of Mahabharata Ramayas, where the disciples sit down peacefully in the ashram with their beloved Gurudev. Wow, 25 or more years of relishing your Krishna Katha, relishing my Gurudev's presence and feeling enlightened by your words of purifying Sabda Brahman and serve you. I really thought I had covered it all. Little did I know what was going to happen next. Then more politics came up and in February 96, 19, uh, 1996, when we arrived in, Bab in Bhubaneswar for the Janana Triodicy, I felt very, really unease, worried, unsettled. Srila so, Gurudev, you asked us to go with you to Mayapur to give some support in the GBC meeting. My feelings were became very heavy and dark. I felt that something really, really inauspicious was about to happen with you. 
I started to pray and cry before the deities in Bhubaneswar and also in Mayapur to please, please protect my Srila Gurudev. And then the thing we feared the most, the thing we were not at all ready for, suddenly happened. I can still remember the loud banging on the door of our room in the Kans building, the frantic chanting in, the, in your room next door to us. As I rushed into your room, I saw you were surrounded by God brothers, all crying, chanting, and praying. And seeing you lying on your bed, I was in complete shock. I was not able to grasp the image which my eyes were so And I cried. Later, I heard a quote from one of the Goswamis. When a spiritual master leaves for a disciple, it feels. Many, many thunderbolts. Anupam's muted. Please un unmute Manupam. Haribo. Haribo. I can hear you now. Wait, okay. Uh, as I rushed out of your, of your room, following my husband to find a doctor, I noticed two Matajis standing in the hall at your door. We had briefly eye contact, but without uttering even a word, we all understood what tragic took place inside the room. Later, I came to know that these two Matajis were your last visitors. My brain, my mind could not grasp the scene. It seemed impossible to take it all in. Suddenly a thought and firm belief entered my heart. No, my Srila Gurudev has not left his body. He has just entered Samadhi, just for a short while. It is not safe here for you in Mayapur. Something bad has happened to you and you have entered Samadhi for a short time. That thought pacified me somewhat. When I heard we were going to take you back to Bhubaneswar, I was quite relieved. And while they were, they were carrying you on the stairs from the fifth floor down to the temple, I softly touched your head, your hand, and reassured you by whispering, Srila Gurudev, we will take you to Bhubaneswar. You will be safe there. There you can come out of your samadhi, feeling safe in Bhubaneswar. We sat 18 hours, long, long hours in the bus from Mayapur to Bhubaneswar. Upon arrival, Everything went so fast. Before I knew, you were carried around the temple on a palanquin. You were taken inside your hut and placed in the hole dug there for you. One by one, all of us threw salt and sand, covering your divine body. My brains failed to comprehend what was going on. I became numb. The whole night I could not sleep, could not process what I had witnessed that day. The next day I saw your samadhi covered with fresh sand and a tulsi plant on top of it. On, only then somehow it down on to me. I'm not going to see you again, Sila Gurudev. You have really gone into a samadhi now. I remember crying, my eyes floating with tears. I never knew so many tears could come from my eyes. After several months, we came back to Bhubaneswar for your Vyas Puja festival in August 1996. On our way to Bhubaneswar, we had to stop over in Mumbai, Iskon Yuhu Temple. Because of my poor health, I consulted a devotee Ayurvedic doctor. His friend was an astrologer. He examined my hand palm and mentioned, Oh, strong guru, strong guru. Pointing at my hands, he said, You have a very, very powerful guru. I told him, Yes, but my guru Dale has left his body six months ago. The astrologer said, Don't worry, don't grieve. Your guru will come back again. He is hiding himself now, just like a cobra, caught up in a basket. But at the proper time, he will reappear again. I thought to myself, if my Chila Gurudev going to reappear from mid Samadhi in his hut, was not quite, I was not quite sure what to make out of it. Then some years later, I heard from God family about a few other similar predictions, that your mission is not complete. You will take birth again to finish your mission. I must admit, I really like the sound of that because Shilal Gurudev, 25 years ago, I was just a baby disciple holding tightly to your lotus feet. Unlike other more advanced God family, I'm unqualified, not sincere, very low form. And after these long, long 25 years, I still feel not grown up, feeling like a lost child. I feel I still need your physical presence, presence and guidance. 
those practical advices you were giving in your chastisements, the discipline, that, bliss, that blissful Sabda Brahman, your merciful glances, I'm missing all of that so much. I'm aware that advanced devotees don't miss their Guru, Guru Deva. They feel his presence only, always. They can perfectly sense and know what direction to go next on their spiritual path. But for me, Sula Guru Deva, I find myself still on the lowest plane, not able to pick up, pick up myself. I know I'm lacking sincerity, surrender, discipline, and much more. I'm still that low fallen worm in the stool, absorbed in living this miserable life. And only at times I'm aware of my misfortune, my hellish, dangerous situation. Only at those rare times, I pray and cry for your costless mercy. Also, I very often ponder about how our spiritual lives would have evolved if this painful event had not taken place. If you would have been still be blessed with your physical presence, Sila Gurudev, why couldn't you have more of that bliss instead of these feelings of separation? 25 years ago, I was very, very naive, always feeling inspired by stories with happy endings. And now, Sila Gurudev, 25 years later, I find myself, I have not changed a bit, still at most naive, hoping and praying for a happy, blissful spiritual life. Your presence under your guidance, a very happy ending of this miserable and empty life of separation from you. Hare Krishna. Sila Gurudev ki jai, Sila Prabhupada ki jai. Thank you very much, Anupam Prabhu. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, I, I, your comments reminded me of many things. I remember shortly after Grandma's left in Mayapur, one of Gopal Krishna Maharaj sent someone to the devotees and asked if they wanted if we wanted to use one of their buses. And that's what Manila Lhasa was speaking about. And I, I was also on that bus. And I remember that was like the ride from hell. The whole journey, I don't remember anybody really saying anything. Just I, I remember everything for me, everything was red and everyone was just crying and crying and we couldn't speak anything. I, I had some reflections about your thoughts, your your deep thoughts about association and why Gurmaj was asking for friendship and like that. Krishna consciousness is such an inconceivable thing that in, in the seventh canto of the Bhagavad when Prahlad speaks about the different processes of devotional service, uh, the, the 12 different angas of bhakti, one of them is sokyam, that we can become friends with God. And that's a type of service. And in the seventh canto of the Bhagavatam also, there's another famous statement from Prahlad Maharaj, where he says that guru sudhara sorida, that one should have an attitude of firm friendship with the guru. So I, I appreciate your points so that, that we, we shouldn't think that I'm friends with guru. We shouldn't be artificially trying to think we're intimate, but at the same time, we should make friends. This is the only friend that we have. And I saw that. I saw how friendly Guru Maharaj was with you, with all the devotees, and that love is there. So anyway, I just want to thank you so much for taking part to this tonight, Prabhuji. I hope we see you sometime in Jagannath Puri next time you come to Arissa. We have a lot to discuss, different services for Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much, Anupam Prabhu. So um, Lokanath Maharaj, I, I'm feeling a little bad making you wait, and also Krishna Chaitanya Maharaj. I don't know what your mood is. I had scheduled... Uh, a video, which is about five minutes right now, of Vaisheshika Prabhu, and then we were going to have you speak. But the video, Vaisheshika Prabhu is not live online, so he's not going to mind. We could play that later, or we could play that now. What would you like? Look at Mars. What's your preference? Would you like to speak something now, or should we watch this video of Vaisheshika Prabhu? You're muted right now. I can't hear what you're saying. Would you like I'm, to start now? Yeah, I would like this. Okay. Thank you very much. I, just let me give a, a very brief introduction. And how can how can a little firefly give an introduction to the sun? The Lokanath Maharaj is one of the most okay. senior devotees in Iskand. So much association with Srila Prabhupada. And also a lot of association with our Guru Maharaj in a way that I think was very, very intimate because 
what I've heard of those days, there was kind of almost like a, uh, I don't know how to say it coming from America, but there was like an American uh, club or something of senior devotees. And for some of the Deshi devotees, like your good self and Subhag Maharaj and Radha Govinda Maharaj and my Guru Maharaj, sometimes it was a little difficult to be accepted and like that. And I think there's a special kind of bond that you had amongst yourselves that was very special. So I, anyway, I just want to thank you very much for coming tonight, Maharaj. And, and if you can share a few words, something that we'd be very, very happy to hear. Thank you. Difficult to speak also an occasion like this. We should be only crying and our voice is getting choked up. Anilo Premadhan. Karuna Prachur. Tanam Prabhu Kotagila. Or Govind Thakur. Ella. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm off everybody's video right now because I think Maharaj's uh, connection may not be so strong. So please yeah. don't mind. Yeah. Everybody's Let's speak louder. Let's speak louder. Uh, that helps, or that would help, Maharaj. I think. Everything else. You you heard me so far. Thus far was okay, or I, should... I heard just a few words. It, it was it was difficult. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, I said uh, very difficult to speak on an occasion like this. I should be only crying and my voice getting choked up. That is what had been happening around the time Bhakti, uh, yeah, God going Maharaj departed and we were left behind and there was nothing else to do but to cry, which I did a lot. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, 77, Peter Prabhupada had asked me to uh, connect this Padhyatra from Vrindavan to Mayapur and as we arrived in Mayapur, said, go to Jagannath Puri. So we were in Orissa and we had uh, some hard times and we needed help. And I had approached Srila Prabhupada. I had already approached God Govind Maharaj and he was very much willing to uh, assist us with our Padhyatra program. And then I informed Srila Prabhupada Then Prabhupada wrote to me uh, in July of 77. Uh, is that all going good up with the sound, uh, Madhvananda? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, uh, okay. We, I can... Yeah? Yes, you, you're coming good. <laughs> the Prabhupada wrote a letter to me, and he, he mentioned, I'm very pleased that God Govind Maharaj will be joining the Bullock Cart Sankirtan. He's a very good preacher, an ideal Vaishnav. So his addition to the party will increase activities. So this was like a music to my ears then and even, even now. When we could, we could and we are glorifying God going Mahara is worth glorifying. But here we could 
here Srila Prabhupada himself glorifying Lord Govind Maharaj and saying he's a very good preacher and uh, he's a ideal Vaishnav. Uh, uh, that's good enough, right? If spiritual master says my disciple is a good preacher and ideal Vaishnav, well, what more has to be said? So uh, Prabhupada has kind of said it all. So, uh, so then uh, different things happen with the uh, uh, Karts and Kids and Maharaj did join the effort. In fact, uh, for some time, Padhyatra had stopped for Bullock Karts and Kitan. And our deities uh, uh, were in uh, Discon Bhubaneswar. And they, yeah, and they are there to this day. One time before the opening of Krishna Balram Temple of Iskand Bhubaneswar, uh, those Gornithai deities, they traveled with Bulakar Sankirtan party from Vrindavan to Mayapur on the way to Jagannath Puri. It is like a Gauranga Mahaprabhu and Nityanand Prabhu. They were traveling in the form of the deities. And as they arrived at Iskand Bhubaneswar, okay, this is it. We are not going to move forward, we are going to stay here, and that is what they did. And they stayed on, and they are they are still there. You could, uh, whenever you go, take darshan. You're in the front of Gornithai deities, big deities, and then small Gornithai deities. Those were the deities of Pulakar Sankirtan party. So that is my big connection with Gaur Govind Maharaj and uh, Iskan Bhubaneswar. And then uh, Maharaj kept doing uh, Padhyatras, Bhullakar Sankirtan, Padhyatra uh, in, in Bhubaneswar for, I think, one, two months. He was taking lots of devotees with him. And uh, as he was made uh, you know, part of Bhullakar Sankirtan party, so he had been doing Padhyatras and uh, his followers are, they are doing that to this day, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm sure Killer Prabhupada is very happy as Gaur Goind Maharaj joined Bullakar Sankirtan party and has kept the party on the road. Then in, uh, well, I, you know, I don't have much time. I never have spoken only 10 minutes. I have a hard time talking. Brief talks are tough for me. Uh, so uh, <laughs> then in 86, we were doing yet another Padhyatra from Dwarka to uh, Mayapur via Kanyakumari. We we're celebrating 500th anniversary of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Gorgoin Maharaj was there at the inaugural function at Dwarka. And uh, then I think we, we saw him spending a lot of time uh, with us as Padhyatra was traveling through uh, Orissa and uh, Gorgoin Maharaj was the face of Padhyatra throughout Orissa and he was our spokesperson. And uh, I remember <laughs> hearing Maharaj speak and uh, <laughs> the, 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 yeah, I, I could only say like a Singha Guru, like a Singha Guru, as we say this with Sri Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur, he was like a Singha Guru, lion guru, roaring and scaring the Mayavadis and materialists. So Gaur Govind Maharaj's uh, talks were uh, very heavy and loud and clear and uh, a roar. Uh, but that is what I remember Maharaj's uh, contribution to our preaching again with Padhyatra throughout Orissa. And Maharaj uh, would travel with us. He was very much dedicated those days also for the translation of Srila Prabhupada's books in Orient language. And uh, sometimes we would say uh, and approach Maharaj, Maharaj, please take uh, Prashad. And he would say, no. I haven't completed my quota. I have to finish my. He had some quota. I don't know. 
10, 20 pages each day. No, I have not finished. How could I take for try them? And then, you know, he also had a, another sunk of kind of, after sunset, he would not take prasad. And, you know, on Padhyatra, our prasad would get late. And then Maharaj would go hungry and he would never complain. Oh, no, no, it's too late. And uh, so like that, Maharaj was very strict following the vows and uh, busy with translation work of uh, Srila Prabhupada's books. Well, then, uh, next thing was 77, not uh, no, 77, uh, this was 96, and the whole world was celebrating Srila Prabhupada's centennial uh, uh, celebration, 100th birth anniversary of Srila Prabhupada. And uh, so we were celebrating the different city of yeah, Prabhupada festivals in different cities. And one of the first city that we covered was a Bhubaneshwar. This was just before Mayapur festival. And uh, we had come with, a, we had a whole uh, exhibition and a whole display and uh, our team had arrived and Maharaj had organized a, a grand uh, festival. Uh, the, uh, our, the, the king of Puri, he was presiding over the function. And uh, I was very much impressed with the organization of that festival glorifying Srila Prabhupada on occasion of 100th birth anniversary of Srila Prabhupada. Well, then we all went to Mayapur. Uh, Maharaj also was there. DBC meetings were going on. And then you could see this is uh, Prabhupada's uh, 100th birth anniversary year. And uh, then that day, was uh, Srila Bhakti Sudhan Saraswati Thakur's appearance day. All day, Maharaj was busy uh, with the GBC meetings. I also was there attending as a minister, uh, those meetings. And in the, in the evening after the meetings, Maharaj is in his couch uh, apartment, surrounded with the devotees. And he's talking about uh, I was talking about Krishna or the uh, the pastimes where there's a separation from Krishna or the Brajabhasis are missing Krishna as he's in Dwarka and uh, all the, those Viraha Bhav he's talking about and he's absorbed and devotees are listening. And uh, then middle of that talk, well, I, this is how I felt that uh, while talking about the, that pastime, Maharaj kind of entered that pastime, leaving us be behind, leaving the body. He entered those Nitya Leelas of uh, Radha and Krishna. And uh, as news was spreading all over the on Mayapur campus, we all ran, rushed. I was not the first one to arrive, and and I, uh, the way I saw him, I, I thought he's is still here, there. I wasn't seeing any symptom of his departure, and uh, the body were massaging him and holding him, and uh, which I also did. So. Uh, so what a glorious uh, departure of our very dear part brother and a friend. And leaving, departing in Mayapur, he's already in the dam, so he doesn't even have to go that much. Right there, the pastimes are on and enter those pastimes. So, uh, so that happened. 
25 years ago. So, uh, Who says Vaishnavas die? That's what Bhakti Vinod Thakur says. Hmm. They stay behind and they preach. Trivani stays behind. And I'm, I'm thankful to uh, Madhvanand Prabhu for taking up this task of publishing books of Gaur Govind Maharaj. Gaur Govind Maharaj is Vani. Is, hmm. The G publication, right? G G G Gopal G Gopal G publications. What a beautiful name, also. I think very dear to Gopal G was very dear to Gaur Govind Maharaj, and these are G, Gopal G publications. So uh, go on publishing and making Vani of Gaur Govind Maharaj available, and. Then he is alive, he is with us, uh, and that will give us life back. And uh, yeah, someone is saying, oh, temporarily he has gone, temporarily he has gone, he is coming back. In fact, he has never gone, he is, he is with us in the form of his bunnies and his, his memories. I was also thinking, uh, it is the duty of his uh, followers and friends, like myself and you all followers, we also have to take care, maintain these uh, two temples, uh, on Bhubaneshwar and the Dadai Giri, right? The Dadai Giri, Maharaj's uh, birthplace temple and uh, deity is there. So, the, so let us all continue to take care of the deities and. Uh, Maintain the temple and uh, reach the glory of Gauranga, Gaurityananda, or Krishna Balaram, and the Prabhupada from, from uh, these places. And keep the uh, Padhyatra also going, which uh, uh, Srila Prabhupada wanted Gaurabhai Maharaj to join the Bullock Karsankitan party. And uh, Maharaj did join and was doing Padhyatras, Bulakar Sankirtan every year. You have been doing it, I'm, I'm happy. So keep doing that. So like this, we could stay busy uh, and doing these things. This is this will, this is the glory of Lord Govind Maharaj. And this, yeah, this will stay alive when so let's perpetuate glories of Lord Govind Maharaj for a long, long time to come. Lord Govind Maharaj, Prabhupada Tithi Mahasava Ki Jai. Lord Nithai Ki Jai. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Han Bhubaneswar Ki Jai. Kadai Giri Ki Jai. Lord Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you very much, Lord Pranath Maharaj. I really appreciate taking the time. And at this time, after our, our spiritual father is gone, we're taking blessings from his friends and from his brothers, like your good self, where your nephews and spiritual life. And we need some blessings. I, I just like to reflect on a couple of things that you were saying about you mentioned how when you saw Gurmaraj's body and it seemed like he was still present. Uh, I, I guess one of the last physical blessings I had from Guru Maharaj was I was one of the devotees who lowered his body into the ground. We, we dug a hole in his bhajan kutir and put salt in the ground there. And we lowered his body into the ground. This was, I think, probably at least 20 hours or so after he'd left this world. And when we lowered his body in the ground, I was very astonished to see that his body was like jelly, it was very, very soft. It was, there was no rigor mortis. It, his body wasn't real cold. Like a, I, I've done some Antiesti ceremonies sometimes, some funeral ceremonies for Hindus and that, and the bodies are always very cold and very hard. His body wasn't like that at all. It, it wasn't warm, but it, it wasn't cold like a corpse. It was a very amazing thing. 
and I also remembering some of you were speaking about the publication work. And, uh, publication work was really started by my dear God brother Raghav Pandit Prabhu, who Gormaj instructed to do that. And after Gormaj's disappearance, Raghav and myself and a couple of devotees, we were we were lost children. We didn't know what to do. What we so we went to see one great Vaishnav in Mayapur, who was Shiva Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj, Prabhupada's god brother. And we asked him, he said, Maharaj, our Guru Maharaj just left. What should we do? And Srila Pony Maharaj spoke in a very powerful way. He looked at us and he said, don't think that your Guru is gone. Rather, you should think that he's just in the bushes hiding and watching to see what you're going to do now. So your words reminded me of that. And I, I want to thank you so much, Maharaj, for taking your time and and I hope you always give your blessings to these poor lost children of, of, of Guru Maharaj. And we need your blessings. And thank you very much. So I'd like to uh, ask Brej Sundar Prabhu, if he's present, if he would like to speak a few words. Brej Sundar Prabhu, are you there? Yes, I'm there, Prabhu. Okay. Um, Brej Sundar Prabhu, for those who don't know, he's a leading disciple of Radha Govinda Maharaj. And uh, uh, but Sunni Prabhu gives lectures all over the world, he travels quite a bit, and he started a, a school at Govardhan. And uh, so yeah. I, I please mute somebody. I'm really glad to have you tonight with Brad Sunni. Can you turn on your video, Brad Sunni Prabhu? I'm trying, but uh, the host has stopped me. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> host is a rascal. <laughs> we have two hosts. We have some co hosts, and I'm trying to. Raghava suggested that we have a couple people do this because our connection's not always good. Can you? I don't see what Brett Sunder Prabhu is at. So just bear with us for a moment. We're trying to get this video going. And right after Brej Sundar Prabhu, we're going to ask His Holiness Krishna Chaitanya Maharaj to say something. We've gone a little off our schedule. Uh, we were going to have show some videos, both of uh, Vaisheshika Prabhu and of Sachinanda Maharaj, but I'm choosing to put those later because they're not live and I don't want to uh, disrespect Krishna Chaitanya Maharaj and the senior devotees who are waiting. But we can put those videos later. They'll also be online on YouTube. So devotees can watch, but I, I want to give special preference to the devotees who are here live right now. I still can't figure out what we can do with Brej Sundar. Well, why, why we can't uh, show his video, Prabhuji? I think Amritesh Gaurav Prabhu, somebody can take a Yeah. We're trying to pick <clears throat> it up. Somehow I, I don't, I, uh, I see you on my main screen. I don't see your face, but I see your name, but I don't. Okay, there's, okay. There's, there's, okay, you got it. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you, Prabhu. So first of all, I just to thank you, Prabhu, for giving an opportunity to speak about and glorify Srila Gaurav So there is there is an incident which I often, Whenever I get an uh, opportunity to glorify Gorgavan Maharaj, I often narrate an incident, uh, unheard incident for many or many devotees, which was uh, been narrated by Gaur Krishna Das Goswami. And uh, that is that particular incident is very, very dear to me. <clears throat> so I like to narrate that. So it, it has uh, Gorgavan Maharaj, Radha Maharaj, and Gaur Krishna Maharaj, uh, three of them together. So I wish to first offer my sincere respects and to the lotus feet of Srila Gaurgavind Maharaj. Once, my, uh, once I was uh, interacting with my Gurudev and uh, my spiritual master Srila Gaurgavind Maharaj said that Gaurgavind Maharaj is a saint person, 100% pure devotee. And he instructed, <clears throat> he instructed us to take Shiksha from the teachings of uh, Srila Gaurgavind Maharaj's books. So once uh, uh, Gaur Krishnadas Goswami 
uh, who is a very dear disciple of Radha Govind Maharaj. He has left the world in 2015. But I got good fortune of uh, spending good time with him. So he narrated this particular incident. Once His Holiness Radha Govind Maharaj and then Gaur, the then Gaur Krishna Prabhu were in Mayapur. I don't remember the exact year. <clears throat> but uh, Radha Govind Maharaj was uh, interacting with his disciple, Gaur Krishna Prabhu, uh, in Mayapur. And a car was passing by suddenly. And it stopped. And the car took a reverse for a distance. And then a personality got down. And it was Gaur Govind Goswami. And as soon as Radha Govind Maharaj, Radha Govind Goswami saw Gaur Govind Swami, he immediately he offered his prostrate obeisances unto his lotus feet. And Gaur Govind Maharaj immediately picked up Radha Govind, Radha Govind Goswami and he embraced him. The ground was wet and Radha Govind Maharaj's kurta was completely muddy. And with the embrace of, with, and the embrace even Gaur Govind Maharaj's kurta became muddy. So Gaur, <laughs> so Gaur Govind Swami was saw, uh, asked Gaur Krishna Prabhu, he kept his hand on Gaur Krishna Prabhu and he asked, is he your Gurudev? And Gaur Krishna Prabhu simply smiled. He did not reply. Then Gaur Govind Swami looked at Radha Govind Maharaj and asked him, is he your, is he your, uh, is he your uh, disciple? And Radha Govind Maharaj said, no, he, he simply smiled. So then looking at Gaur Krishna Prabhu and pointing figure of Radha Govind Maharaj, Gaur Govind Swami said that Jai Radha say Gaur. <laughs> Gaur, Krishna, Gaur Krishna, Gaur Krishna, listen, Jai Radha say Gaur Govind is common between both of us. So Gaur Govind and Radha Govind, there is no difference. So there have been many similarities in the life of both these sadhus. Both met this, both when they met this uh, spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada engaged them, both of them in translating books into Hindi. And uh, both these sadhus have Srimad Bhagavatam as a life on soul. Both were instructed by uh, Srila Prabhupada to, uh, to preach the message of uh, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam and make disciples. So there was a, I, I wish to, I, I never met Gaur Govind Maharaj, but I often, by the instructions of my Guru Maharaj, I took, uh, I very deeply studied the books published by Madhananda Prabhu, and I was able to understand. I heard so many classes. I used to have a, <clears throat> 23 hours, uh, 23 uh, series, different series of uh, Gaur Govind Maharaj, and I got fortune to hear all of them. Once I heard all of them. And I often had a desire to have personal version of Maharaj, but never got, never, I was, it was, there was never a fortune, such fortune. But there was one incident uh, I would like to narrate. Probably I have never told this thing to anybody. I was at Vrindavan and a disciple of Gaur Govind Maharaj came, uh, Maharaj's disciple. No, 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 sorry, Maharaj. Shesh, no, no. And uh, I, I liked one of the pictures. I liked one of the pictures because it, it had full version of Maharaj's lotus feet and the lotus face. So I asked the devotee, would you like to, would you please give this to me? And uh, he said, no, I can't give because this is, this is, this is my guru days. Uh, I can't give it to you like that. So I said, okay, Prabhuji. I just folded my hands and said, I'm very sorry for asking you this. The devotee uh, left me and he, he went, he went, he was walking away. And after some time, he came running to me. After a while, he came running to me, looking for me. And he said that, uh, uh, take this picture. I said, what happened? I said, Gurudev, Gurudev told me, Gurudev came to me and he said, go and uh, he got inspiration from his heart that I should give this picture to you. And he was telling me that as if Gurudev was telling me that this, that you should give this picture to Brat Sundar. And he came and said, please take this picture. And I'm very sorry for uh, not giving this to you previously. So this particular incident actually uh, had a big impact on my life because uh, this was like an acceptance that I accepted Maharaj and Maharaj also accepted me. So this confirmed actually that uh, uh, there's, there is some connection was some connection was there. So I'm very, very thankful to Madhananda Prabhu for uh, giving his life, for spreading the teachings and uh, of Srila Gaur Govind Maharaj, which are actually the glories of the scriptures, glories of Srimad Bhagavatam. So I sincerely thank Madhavan Prabhu and all, all his team 
who are sincerely working very hard for uh, spreading the teachings of Guru Gobind Maharaj, and uh, uh, especially <coughs> Guru Tattva. If one wants to understand about how <coughs> what is Guru Tattva, then one should definitely uh, read it from the books of Guru Gobind Maharaj. Try to hear his lectures. One's faith for his spiritual master will definitely increase. One surrender for the spiritual master will definitely increase. So one, when one hears from the from our, our reads Maharaj's uh, book, so much conviction is there. So much one needs to have so much faith and conviction in the lotus feet of spiritual master. So that conviction will come when when we hear such uh, such such understanding. Uh, I was very inspired when when uh, when Gorgon Maharaj explains in one of his classes how the relationship between the disciple and the guru is not an ordinary relationship, but it is a, it, the relationship which is managed by Yoga Maya. So that actually made a lot of difference in my life. So I sincerely thank uh, Madhavan Prabhu for your service. And also I wish to offer again my respectful obeisance to Santa Lotus Suite of Gaurgavind Maharaj. And uh, my Gurudev has uh, been very <clears throat> mercifully asked me to publish Maharaj's books in Hindi. So uh, we did some, but we'll be definitely going making an effort to more do more of his books in hindi and make uh, and help many devotees to understand the glories of Srimad bhagavatam and chaitanya mahaprabhu with the writings of gurvin maharaj thank you very much Hare krishna thank you so much Bhagavad prabhu i really really appreciate you you know the story Guru krishna prabhu maharaj he'd come to mayapur some years ago he was there for Guru maharaj's disappearance festival and he started telling a story that you were telling how uh, the car was coming by and, and Guru Maharaj came in and your Guru Maharaj offered a base and says, Dandavats in the mud. And then Guru Maharaj picked him up and embraced him and they were both muddy. It was such a very amazing, attractive story. And then just as he's about at that point of the story, suddenly a very senior Vaishnavacharya walked into the room with his disciples and there was a big tumult and everybody stood up and things. And then that person spoke and Gaur Krishna Maharaj couldn't finish what he started. And I always wanted to hear that story, but then he left this world. So I want to thank you very much. And, and to anybody who reads Hindi, you should please read that there's a Gopal Jew book. There's a first magazine translated into Hindi. There's uh, how to find guru. But Sunday Prabhu has been orchestrating a number of things like that. And I'm very appreciative of that. And, and also, he stays with us sometimes when he comes to Pori. We have a, we have a place here with you. Dr. Prabhu loves you very much. So thank you very much, Brother Sunday Prabhu. I'm thank feeling you. a little bad because we have a very special guest. Everybody's very special, but some are special, special. And one such special, special person is His Holiness Krishna Chaitanya Maharaj. And I'd like to ask Maharaj to uh, say something tonight. Uh, for those, I, I, again, me trying to introduce Krishna Chaitanya Maharaj is like a firefly trying to introduce the sun. It's, it's a bit of a joke. Maharaj is a very, very well-known personality. And not only is he a leading spiritualist, but he's also a very prominent scholar of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And he works at the Oxford University uh, group and, and, and also the BRC. And sometimes Maharaj also stays with us in Pori. And we're very eager for you to come and stay there again. Thank you very much for coming, taking part tonight. Would you like to say something tonight, Maharaj? I would. Thank you, Madhavananda Prabhu. First, first, indeed, my thanks to you for thinking of me. I must say, as I got your email, I, I felt like, okay, that's very nice, but, but why me? Um, the very little association I had with your Guru Maharaj, uh, but I took it as uh, blessings of, uh, of your Guru Maharaj, of Srila Gaur Govinda Swami Maharaj, to whom I want to offer my most humble obeisances and my most humble pranams to all the Vaishnavas and to our Srila Prabhupada. Um, <clears throat> well, let me start with uh, the, the one time that I had a kind of private um, meeting, we can say darshan, 
with uh, Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj. Um, it must have been around 1993. Uh, I was kind of the coordinator for the compiling of ISKCON's deity worship manual. The GBC wanted this manual to be uh, put together. Um, they wanted something more elaborate than had been done up to that time. So it was a group of us working on this, but I was kind of the, yeah, the coordinator. So I wanted, I, I had questions for Maharaj and uh, he very kindly agreed to see me. It was in Mayapur. And I have to say, I'm trying to remember now, um, <laughs> But I think this may have been the time that kicked off, so to say, something of a mission, something of a campaign on Gorgovinda Maharaj's part, uh, namely this, uh, what became something of a controversy, namely whether um, the deity of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu should wear or should not wear a peacock feather. And as I'm sure all of you know, <laughs> Gaur Govinda Maharaj was adamant that he should not have the peacock feather. Why? Because this would be a complete disturbance of his, uh, of his bhava as the devotee of Krishna, as a, as a bhakta. Um, whether I'm to blame for kicking that off, I'm not sure. <laughs> but... Uh, it was a subject that uh, became a matter of concern. Uh, much more recently, in fact, just a few days ago, I received an email from a very dear God brother of mine. Um, I think he wouldn't mind if I mention his name, Pancharatna Prabhu, who lives in Mayapur. And uh, he was asking me for my perspective on how the terms sadhu, shastra, and guru might best be defined for the purpose of the, <laughs> uh, the institution of ISKCON is in the process since, year, since years now. Um, Srila Prabhupada wanted that the GBC have a constitution and uh, okay, so they've been working on this and they want the constitution uh, to be uh, based on sadhu, shastra, and guru. Very good. Uh, so he's writing to me. Why is he writing to me? Uh, I'm sure he's writing to many devotees asking, how shall we define sadhu, shastra, and guru? And then I received... Uh, Madhavananda Prabhu's invitation to speak today. And I thought, there's no problem to understand what is Sadhu, Shastra, and Guru. Just look at this embodiment of Sadhu, Shastra, and Guru, uh, Srila Gaur Govinda Swami Maharaj. And I like to uh, remember Srila Narottam Das Thakur's song, Sadhu Shastra Guru Vakya Hridaye Koryo Aikya Satatam Bastibo Prema Maje. And I feel like this is very much embodied um, by Gaur Govinda Maharaj, um, where the result of bringing together Sadhu Shastra and Guru in the heart. Sadhu Shastra Guru Vakya Hridaye Koriya Aikya. There is a singularity, Aikya, from the word Eka, uh, coming together. What is the result of that? The result is Satatamba Shiva Prema Maje. I will constantly float uh, in Prema. <laughs> and that's what we have seen uh, with. Uh, Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj. As I was hearing uh, uh, His Holiness Tapasvi Maharaj just now a few minutes ago speaking 
about how how the devotees uh, were coming to Gaur Govinda Maharaj, feeling feeling disoriented, feeling yeah, some conclusion, some confusion, or a lot of confusion, and how uh, Gaur Govinda Maharaj would would preach so powerfully, especially on the subject of Guru Tattva. Uh, it reminded me of uh, this little episode uh, of Srila Prabhupada in London at, um, at Buri Place, Buri Place, not Buri Place, Buri, Buri Place. Uh, when the temple was first opened, the deities were first established and um, you may have seen photos, Radhalan and Ishvara, above them a shelf, and on the shelf were Jagannath, Sub Jagannath Subhadra Valadev. And Srila Prabhupada had, had seen that this shelf was starting to, starting to drop. So Srila Prabhupada had personally jumped up and held up <laughs> this <laughs> shelf with Lord Jagannath um, for some time until the devotees worked out something so that there was no disaster. Uh, so I was thinking of <laughs> Gorgo Vinda Maharaj in some sense doing something similar for so many devotees, holding up uh, and, you know, in this dangerous condition, um, making clear what is, what is Guru Tattva. And I came across uh, this very nice passage from him, which I'd like to share, which many of you have probably read because it's in the book, which um, very nicely Madhavananda Prabhu has put together. Um, this is on page 318. Um, the meaning of Sri Guru. And I think this connects with this theme of how uh, we have a sense that Gorgo Maharaj is still with us. He says, one should understand what is Sri Guru Charanapadma. The words Sri Guru are very significant. Sri means Shabha, uh, <clears throat> Shobha, sorry, beauty, Sampada, transcendental wealth, or asset, and Sreshta, the topmost. Sri Guru means that guru, that guru who is endowed with Sri, with Prema Bhakti. The word Sri is used because there is no question of Sri Guru disappearing or not being manifest. It is only applicable to a guru who is e eternally manifest. Otherwise, such a word would not be used. So this is sort of high, highlighting the understanding of what, okay, we want to define guru. Well, there it is. Um, but as I'm saying, I see in Maharaj all three. He is guru. He is sadhu. He is also shastra. He is embodiment uh, of all of these. And... On this, on this aspect of his sadhutva, uh, I was rereading re how he was wandering through all of India, but with one single purpose, and that was to find his guru. He was searching, and of course, as we all know, uh, eventually he found Srila Prabhupada in Vrindavan. But also, um, I looked up the word sadhu because they were asking for definitions. And, um, you know, that's what happens <laughs> when you spend too much time with uh, the so-called scholars is you want to get, um, you look in dictionaries and things. But anyway, here it is, sadhu from the Sanskrit dictionary. There are many, many definitions, but one of them is straight, leading straight, correct, and pure. So I thought, yes, this is also very much applicable 
And of course, we have the word sadhu in the Bhagavatam several times, and I found this wonderful, I find, applicable verse uh, from First Canto, chapter 15, verse 46. Te sadhu kritta sarvartha gyat vatyantikam atmana manasa dharayam asur vaikunta charanam bhujam. They all, this is referring to the Pandavas, they all had performed all the principles of religion and as a result rightly decided that the lotus feet of Lord Krishna are the supreme goal of all. Therefore, they meditated upon his feet without interruption. So Gaur Govinda Maharaj, he'd actually already decided long before uh, he met Srila Prabhupada that uh, the uh, purpose of life uh, is uh, to worship Lord Krishna. And that was confirmed, of course, by Srila Prabhupada, who in this case is reminding me of Narada confirming to Srila Vyasadeva, uh, who uh, had this sense also that um, there is something wanting uh, in uh, his practice of writing. And so this brings us to Shastra, which <laughs> anyone who has heard uh, lectures of Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj knows he's uh, simply walking Shastra, but not just empty quoting, but, uh, but giving uh, the life of Shastra. So just a little reminder of the advice from Gaur Govinda Maharaj, hear daily, nityam bhagavata sevaya, you have your daily activities, nitya karmas, including eating, sleeping, bathing, and praying. This hearing should also be one of them. Can you survive without your daily activities? No, but how many people are Collecting Srimad Bhagavatam. Are they surviving? Actually, they are not. Although living, they are dead. Jivan Mrita. Their breathing is only like that of the blacksmith's bellows. <laughs> so, as we also heard earlier, Srila uh, <clears throat> Govinda Maharaj's preaching was, was sharp, it was cutting, uh, and <laughs> it was sometimes uh, devastating his criticism of devotees. And I, I feel uh, that, truth be told, uh, Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj has, has not, has by far not been sufficiently appreciated in the wider world of the Vaishnava community, um, but I'm hopeful, and I'm especially hopeful that he will become more and more appreciated and revered, heard from, uh, especially as we see you, his disciples. Um, I'm, in particular, I've been benefited by Madhavananda Prabhu uh, with his total Dedic dedication to his Guru Maharaj. But I think we, we have a bright future uh, for the wider society of Vaishnavas to uh, win a greater appreciation uh, for Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj. And uh, as we get this appreciation, he will Im imbibe in uh, the wider community of Vaishnavas, the spirit which uh, he embodied of being the embodiment of Sadhu, Shastra, and Guru. So my prayers are for uh, the blessings, the good wishes of all of you followers of Gaur Govinda Maharaj to help me to appreciate him and uh, my prayers to him as well that I may imbibe something, something of his quality of uh, 
uh, ecstatic devotion to Lord Shri Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very, very much, Maharaj. I really appreciate your very deep thoughts about our Guru Maharaj. I have a few reflections I'd like to just share. You mentioned how Guru Maharaj was so attached to Shastra. I remember one class that he gave, he gave an instruction to all his disciples. And he said that if you can't quote Shastra, don't tell them you're my disciple. <laughs> a very sobering <laughs> instruction. He, he appreciated Shastra so much. I remember him once looking through a book of one contemporary leader, spiritual leader, and it was a good book. And it was a person that Guru Maharaj was close with also. But he went, to, he just flipped to the book a few pages and he didn't see any verses. And he said, oh, no verses. <laughs> and he wasn't interested in looking at the book. I was very, very much focused on Shastra. I was also appreciating your point about how Gurmarsh hasn't been so appreciated. And this morning in our session, we heard from Parthasarathy Maharaj, and he was very emotionally speaking about that also and how that caused him so much pain. And as a disciple, as a, someone who's hoping to become a disciple someday, I've heard from a lot of our God brothers, many devotees who want to enthusiastically promote Guru Maharaj. And of course, that's the business of a disciple to worship their guru. But there's also kind of a fine line. Bhaktivinoda Thakur uses a phrase, Amar Guru, Jagat Guru, that my Guru Dave is very great. And I've always felt that the best way to present Guru Maharaj, it's like someone sitting on the bank of the Ganga and they're looking at the sun rising. On, on the other side of the, of the river. And as they're sitting there, you go and step in front of them and you start jumping up and down and telling them all about the glories of the sun. And the sun is so wonderful and the sun is so bright. And finally the person just says, do you mind just get out of the way so I can see the sun myself? And so that's partly yeah. why we want to have programs like this because there's a tendency sometimes amongst those of us who had some physical association with someone who think, I know him, he belongs to me, I understand him. And then we just get in the way. And rather we should just step out of the way and let people see the sun for themselves. And that's our humble desire. And by you speaking, we get to see some other different perspective of appreciation of that sun. I, I, I really appreciate so much, Maharaj. I know you have so many different projects you're working on. Uh, <laughs> Some of the devotees in the BRC just came down recently to Pori and were telling me about some of the things that you're doing more with the Bhagavatam and things. I know you're very, very busy with the scholarly things and, and also your disciples and your preaching. And for you to come and spend a little time with us like this tonight, it's very much appreciated. Thank you. I just want to say, I just read your article. I finally um, got a copy of your article on uh, Srila Fakir Mohan Prabhu and um, how he hated it when people referred to him as a scholar and a professor. <laughs> so I have to say I'm also embarrassed by this. But, anyway. <laughs> but thank you. I remember once in Mayapur, I saw one sannyasi. And it's always a problem in Mayapur around Gaur Purnima time. There's so many sannyasis. I feel like I'm doing push-ups all day long, offering obeisances. <laughs> and, and I found myself at a certain point that I wasn't very enthusiastically offering obeisances. So then I saw an older sannyasi, it happened to be uh, Mahavishnu Maharaj, the elderly Mahavishnu Maharaj. And so I thought, I really want to offer my pranams in a very nice way. So I stayed down for a minute and offered obeisances. And he saw me, and somehow it struck him, and he called me over. And he said, what's your name? Who's your guru? And I of my head, I said, oh, Sri Sri Mad Bhagavinda Mars. And then he said, oh, your Guru Mars, he's a great scholar. And I, <laughs> and I remember, of course, I think his appreciation was not just for Guru Mars in an academic way. But I remember when he said that, I thought, oh, yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> I never thought of Guru Mars as a scholar. And I, and I also don't see you as a scholar, Mars. I see you as a great thinker and, and a Vaishnava, a sadhu. And I think Vishnu, Vishnu. 
one of the greatest delights for us in the last few years has been when you come and stayed with us sometimes in Pori, and we have a place for you there. Anytime you come, please, please do so. Thank you again. So right. we were going to uh, stop around this time, but what I'm thinking to do now, because we have two videos that we were going to watch, one of Vaisheshika, which is about five minutes, and the second one of Sachinanda Maharaj, which is, I think, about 15 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and play those videos on, online here on our, on our uh, live stream. So anybody who wants to take part with that, you can. These are just videos. We're going to upload them later to YouTube. So if anybody feels a need to go, please don't feel shy. So we'll start off with uh, Vaisheshika Prabhu. This is something he made a few days ago for us. For those of you who may not know Vaisheshika Prabhu, he's a very dear friend of ours. And uh, he's a very sastric person, but a very, very simple, sweet devotee who likes to uh, show people how to have a direct experience with Krishna. And he's very, very dedicated to book distribution. So here's a few words from Vaisheshika Prabhu. Vajra Kalpa Drubhasya Kripa Sanupi Vajra Patitanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnabe Bhyo Namo Maha My name is Vaisheshika Das. I am a disciple of Srila Prabhupada and the godbrother of Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj. Very gratefully so to be considered in the same company, in the same spiritual family as an advanced devotee, an actually advanced devotee, who is like, in my mind, the flower in the forest that scents the whole forest. One pure Vaishnav who is steeped in the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, remembering them, explaining them, and enacting them, changes the whole world. And when Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj humbly came into the assembly of ISKCON devotees and approached Srila Prabhupada, of course, Srila Prabhupada recognized his stature uh, amidst so many others who were sincere but did not have his pedigree, which is that he's a pure Vaishnav from birth and his whole life is dedicated to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from birth. So <clears throat> this is a very special day for me to remember such an exalted God brother who did so much to bring out the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the world. And I'm very, very grateful to him I had a little association with Maharaj in Bhubaneswar in the early days. My godbrother, uh, Bhagavat, Bhagavat Maharaj, invited me to come and stay with him. He was in a little hut, straw hut, on the property, Bhubaneswar. Only the foundation had been dug. There was nothing built there. And there was a bullet cart there and a couple of little thatched huts. Srila Gorgovinda Maharaj lived in one of the huts. We lived in another one. The cook would cook over a fire, an open fire, and we'd take prasadam, and Gorgovinda Maharaj would sit and uh, give Bhagavatam lectures, the likes of which I've never heard, I had never heard before. And watching him was watching uh, prasadam. Uh, he was the mercy of the Lord incarnate. I noticed also his fixity that he moved about the earth as we traveled sometimes from Bhubaneswar. He would stop to take his afternoon bath anywhere, very strictly following all the pancharatric processes, even as he would uh, <clears throat> be remembering Krishna and speaking about uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the pastimes of the Lord. On this uh, divine day of his um, celebrating his life, I am praying that I can, can always remember him 
and follow in his footsteps by seeing his example and taking it up in my own life. And may all his followers all over the world be glorified on this day for serving him and spreading his message all over the world. Thank you very, very much for allowing me just to say a few words about this most exalted Vaishnav and one who has changed the world just by his walking on the planet Earth. Thank you very much. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Srila Gorgavinda Maharaj. Gor Premanande Hari Bol Hari Krishna. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> That's Vaisheshika Prabhu. Uh, Vaisheshika Prabhu is like a personification of encouragement. And for those of you who are not familiar with him, he has a beautiful website called Fan the Spark. And that's his whole mood in life, just to fan whatever spark of enthusiasm or interest someone may have in spiritual life. He lives for that. So I, I feel very blessed that uh, he shared that with us. I'd like to uh, now turn to a, a short video also of Sachinanda Maharaj speaking something about Gormaj. Give me one moment here. Let's start this. Uh, let's see. There we go. Hare Krishna, my dear devotees. Uh, it's a great to address you today um, where we celebrate His Holiness Gorgobita, very beloved God brother. Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shemata Bhakti Vedanta Swami Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharini Nirvishesha Shunya Bhani Shila Gorgavinda Maharaj the first time went to our Heidelberg Temple lecture on Lord Balaram. After he had concluded his lecture, I went with him up to his room and I asked him a question. Maharaj, you have been singing. You have been so enthusiastic to share very deep uh, points in uh, Krishna consciousness that uh, I have not heard before. Your style of delivery is so uh, extraordinary. Uh, please explain to me what is in your mind. What do you want to uh, achieve while preaching in our movement? It was a question asked out of curi curiosity. I had been very inspired by his delivery. I thought, oh, here is someone who can supply nectar. But I wanted to know what was going on in his mind. And at that time, he explained to me his three purposes <laughs> preaching uh, within our movement. And I want to read these three purposes in his own words to you, because it's nice on such a day to connect with the message, the mission of the whole personality of Gorgovinda Maharaj. He says, in New York City, July 94, there are three things that are very important to me. One is that I want to preach to the preacher. <laughs> oh, Rana. The devotees falling down and going away. The second thing is that I want to show how everything is in Srila Prabhupada's books.
Hey, Madhavananda, you, you are muted, so you can't hear Maharaj's video. Uh, I can hear. Serving Shira Prabhupada. Mm. And uh, much later, uh, I could see oh, oh, yeah. they what could... he meant. Mm. I could see much later mm, how the devotee staff to obtain this uh, deep and relishable insights in their Krishna consciousness. Therefore, I very much congratulate uh, those like our Madhavananda Prabhu, who regularly publish um, the lectures or excerpts from the books or even books by Maharaj. It's a great need. We need that nourishment. When I came to the temple in Bhuvaneshwara, please excuse me for a moment. <coughs> when I came, uh, Maharaj had already left the planet, but I looked at the place where he stayed. I looked at the, obviously the temple, and then there was a smaller temple, and I could walk a little bit through his heart, so to say, because these external buildings were manifestations of what he had in his heart. And I think you as disciples, and friends and well-wishers of Maharaj know that he wanted to open a crying school. Mm. He was very much aware of Lord Chaitanya's way of preaching in the mood of separation, Viparlambhava, this bhakti is called Viraha Bhakti, because See, in separation from Krishna, you go inside your heart and you find him there. That is the most uh, relevant and realistic way of meeting Krishna for us conditioned souls. Meeting him by feeling a separation from him to the degree that we cry. I would like to speak about this crying school a little bit. And I've also <coughs> found some very nice uh, references. There were two types of crying, uh, which Maharaj uh, a variety of uh, subject matters. So in this crying school, there was uh, crying for Guru Kripa and then crying for Krishna Kripa. Let us first hear a quote on the um, first point, crying for Guru Kripa. The Shishya. The Sadaka, Maharaj says, should always cry for Guru Kripa, the causeless mercy of the Guru. Unless you cry for it, you cannot get it. Nobody 
can get that mercy without crying. For example, when the child cries, the mother runs thinking, oh, my child is crying. The child cannot be pacified by anything without the mother's presence. Because she is engaged in performing household duties, the mother may give the child a toy or a doll to play with, but the child will throw down the toy or doll and cry and cry. So unless you cry, how can you get that mercy? This crying is required. This comes from a lecture in San Francisco uh, in the year 1994. So crying for the Spurta Master mm, mm, as mercy. Uh, how can you meet your Spurta Master? You have to cry. And then Lord Paramatma makes the arrangement that you meet mm, the appropriate spurt master. When you have a spurt master, how can you get uh, the mercy from him? You have to cry, especially after his departure. Oh, Gurudev, I'm very helpless. I'm overcome by the material modes of nature and uh, I'm in trouble. Uh, please uh, appear in my heart and help me, direct me uh, to the right path. This crying is, is required. Mm. Uh, second type of crying, crying for Krishna's mercy. I will read to you uh, from a lecture given in Paris mm, in the year 1985. Mm. We should always be praying Krishna, please help me. Chanting Hare Krishna means that the soul is crying. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Oh Krishna Shakti, Radharani. Oh Krishna, please engage me in your service. I'm fallen. I would like to uh, <laughs> end here. It's a beautiful quotation, um, but this is the crying school of our Govinda Maharaj. He taught, he lived what he taught. He gave an example and he is always there to contact by any sincere disciple. Just end his crying school. <laughs> Cry. Don't uh, be shy. <laughs> um, don't uh, reserve anything. We need help. Our mind is not always under our control. Mm -hmm. uh, material life is not pleasant. Um, uh, mercy is required. I thank you very, very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So unfortunately, he's not with us live, but I want to offer my thanks again and again to Sachinanda Maharaj. Sachinanda Maharaj, for many, many years, every year, he takes off at least one month, for, usually for Kartik, and he goes and he chants one and one and a half, two lakhs a day. And I've seen in him, he's very, very intent about this concept of crying for Krishna and how important that is. And, and He's correct. Our Guru Maharaj also spoke so much about this. Guru Maharaj called it Atma Krandana, the crying of the soul. Once Jagadatma Prabhu asked Guru Maharaj a question. He said, Guru Maharaj, you're always speaking about how we should cry, but I, I don't know how to cry. And Guru Maharaj then told him, he said, after I leave this world, then you'll cry. So that's a very natural thing, as such an is explaining this. So I want to thank all the devotees. We're trying to create something of a virtual Sangha with devotees. And I appreciate these different devotees from different Vaishnava Sanghas who have different opinions, different understandings, different depth of understanding of Guru Maharaj. 
And if we can be broad minded and, and, and open up our hearts and listen to them, at the same time keeping our particular concept, we'll all be greatly benefited. I especially want to thank Krishna Chaitanya Maharaj and, and uh, Lokanath Maharaj and all the senior devotees who took some of the valuable time to come and take part in this today. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop there. Thank you, Pushkaraksha Prabhu. Yeah, I, 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 we were trying to, to mute the thing and, and I muted myself and, and that was a mistake. Okay, so we'll be back again uh, tomorrow, Indian time in the morning, 9.30 in the morning. That's about uh, 12 and a half hours from right now, wherever you're at in the world. And tomorrow we have a really amazing session in the morning. We'll have a short video of Gurmarsh for goes for five minutes. He's speaking about the most important thing. And then we'll hear some words from His Holiness Giri Raj Maharaj, and then from Naranja Maharaj, and then we'll have a video of Romapad Maharaj, Madhu Mangal Prabhu, the former temple president, and, and, and uh, Guru Gaon Prabhu will speak, and then Chandramoli Maharaj, and then we'll finish that session. We'll again have another session in the evening. In our evening session tomorrow, our closing session, Bhakti Vigyan Maharaj will be speaking, Radhanath Maharaj will be speaking, and a number of other senior devotees. So again, I want to thank everybody very much for taking part in this, and we're going to go ahead and stop here now. Shri Srimad Gaurgavinda Swami Maharaj, Guru Deva Ki, Gopremanandi Hari Hari Bo, Panch, Yudhishcha, Kripa Sindhu Deva Cha, Patita Nam Pavanebhyo, Vaishnavebhyo. Oh. Sundar Nandi Prabhu Kija is singing to Pasri Maharaj and Raghava Pandit and Gokul Prabhu. Please accept our humble Dandavat Pranams from Bali. <laughs> I hope everybody gets that. <laughs> it was wonderful. I, only time I ever was in Bali was with Raghava Pandit and, and to Pasri Maharaj and uh, Gokul. It was a very, very special visit. So thank you again very much. Hare Krishna. <laughs>